Yes, awesome. Sir. Well, I'm just about to start the stream here. I uh, have it on the starting screen. Um, so let's get going. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to yet another Thursday AMA. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, we've had a good week, um, you know, uh, very much unlike the last couple of weeks, and we have some very good stuff in the in the works right now, uh, you know, hoping to, uh, you know, keep that momentum going. Um, one of the major things that we saw, and, you know, uh, one of the major things that contributed to uh, down to our positive price action, um, realistically, was our adjustment to our protocol sales. So we've noticed that this automatic selling has has essentially completely halted at this point. Uh, there's nothing that's been going to the treasury, nothing that's been going to the liquidity pools or to the team. And what we've done is we've set 100% of all um, <clears throat> collected Thor um, in the uh, in in node creation or, or node compounding. We set 100% of that over to our rewards pool. Um, and so that's been a significant um, you know burden uh, on the price action, and it was definitely time to turn it off. And we're really happy to see some of the reactions, uh, especially price wise, of what's happened since we've turned that off um so it's looking really bullish it's looking really good um you know we've had a little bit of a retraction today but i think we're gonna have another leg up uh i'm looking forward to it myself and uh yeah let's get started here with the questions like normal uh what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be going down the pre-recorded questions Yusuf's gonna read them out i'm gonna answer them and then we're gonna jump into the live portion of the ama um i do have to say we will not be having a follow-up ama about the pde game uh simply because the pde guys are currently in new york meeting an unnamed figure um who might be a potential partner uh, on this project as well. Uh, very, very well known, uh, big name, and uh, if we do manage to land him, you all will know who it is, and uh, it'll be one hell of a get. So we're very excited to see how that's going. Um, but they're getting prepared for that meeting, so that's the reason they won't be coming in today's AMA. However, we will be doing the whitelist allocations from Aaron. Uh, he will be coming in later on at the end of the AMA, um, just to start doing giving away some whitelists and stuff like that. Uh, so that's going to be essentially the schedule for today. It's going to be like normal it's gonna go on for about an hour and a half two hours or so and uh yeah let's uh let's get her going here uh hit me yusuf with the qu uh, pre-recorded questions yeah perfect so first question of the evening uh, shimas asks how relevant will the new undisclosed feature slash upgrade be for for sustainability so i think he's um he's referring to some of the stuff that we've mentioned that we have going on in the background but we've not really mentioned exactly what it is just yet well, it's extremely relevant to the ecosystem that we're building. Um, you know, an ecosystem consists of multiple uh, multiple products that all work in line to support the underlining asset. So the underlining asset for us is our reward token. So the whole game here is to be, uh, add as much utility in a short enough time frame uh, to where we can see some positive upheld price action and price action that's completely independent of new nodes being made, which means a lot of people will be buying for these secondary utilities that are within our ecosystem that won't be contributing anything more to the emissions. Uh, so that's a major primary goal, and that's the reason we've been talking up our marketplace. That's the reason we've been talking up, uh, you know, the PDE game and some of the other unreleased, unannounced things uh, that we're adding to our ecosystem, because that's that's realistically where we see the long-term uh, future of this project going. Um, we really only see sustainability being reached uh, simultaneously through a through through you know a complete control over the net final emissions that are going to be emitted, uh, as well as adding in as many utilities to our ecosystem as possible, all to provide by pressure to the Thor token. Fantastic. DB asks, um, are you worried that V2 didn't create the positive price action that we were waiting for and we are losing value every day? What's the next action? Well, I mean, what we did is the next action is what well, exactly what we did, right? So we saw well, uh, when we initially released V2, we uh, we did see a decrease of the protocol sales from 46% of, uh, of Thor collected through the compounding and node creation process uh, all the way down to 30%. And uh, what we did is we monitored that for a week. And we saw that that didn't have necessarily the effect on the price action that we wanted. And so what we did is we tweaked it down to 0%. Um, and that has seen some significant price uh, price action in our favor. Um, more price action will, of course, be happening as we add more utilities and as we get closer uh, to unveiling and releasing some of these uh, and, you know, new utilities within our ecosystem. Uh, the next thing will, of course, be the new UI. Uh, we're still a week or two out from that. Um, but that the progress on that has been going phenomenally. I've seen some things in the back that I'm 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 very excited. I, I genuinely think we're going to be going from probably one of the worst UIs in DeFi to one of the best UIs in DeFi. It's going to be one extreme to the other. And I'm very excited to start showing that off to people. 
Um, but we we're we're, uh, we're letting Oblivion and his team work really hard on that to make sure um, you know not just the functionality is there that we're looking for, but really to have a very strong aesthetics brand, and that brand need to be carried on throughout our web, you know, the landing page all the way down to the D app, all the way down to the treasury investments page, the tracker, all of that. Um, so, so that's the reason it's taken some time, but, uh, you know, as, as I've said before, good things take time and we don't want to rush out a unfinished product. We want to have something that's really, really impressive to, to, to show off to our community. Amazing. Uh, DE asks, we can get an entirely new audience of investors with a P2E game if launched properly through Seedify or some similar launchpad. Uh, potentially a lot more people than we already have right now, given that the gaming narrative uh, slash market is huge. Are we planning to partner with a P2E launchpad? Uh, if yes, any ideas which one that could be? Uh, we're not looking to partner with a PDE launchpad. Um, what we're looking to do, especially because what with our marketplace, we're looking to become a major launchpad. Um, so from our perspective, it doesn't quite make sense to partner with somebody who might be in direct competition with us. What we want to do, though, in, in one of the major strategies behind the PDE game is to introduce an entire new batch of people into the Thor ecosystem. And these people will be buying the Thor token, not necessarily looking to make nodes, uh, but they'll be buying the Thor token to participate with the game and utilize those Thor tokens in the government aspect of the game uh, that's the reason it's really important for us to have a wide broad appeal and uh, that's exactly what we're looking to achieve with the game and you can certainly see from our social interactions that uh, you know simultaneously the game uh, account uh, is growing significantly uh, it's getting a lot of engagement a lot of interactions and we're very excited about that and there's a lot of people who aren't necessarily in the Thor ecosystem already which is really shows that we're playing to a brand new audience bringing in a lot more fresh blood into our ecosystem while not increasing our emissions it's literally a win-win Lovely. This is an interesting one. Blockboy asks, will Thor eventually do node buybacks to take nodes offline and thereby reduce emissions if needed? Uh, this happening once the NFT marketplace is set up, of course. Well, um, you know, the beautiful thing about our protocol's ability to utilize buybacks is buybacks can happen in multiple ways. Uh, buybacks can help inflate the price by, you know, purchasing the Thor, Thor token and add, re redistributing those th purchase Thor tokens back into the reward pools. Um, but there's also a, a major benefit uh, from being able to have a net scaling down of emissions once we are nodes and marketplaces. Uh, so I think there's a lot of people who are starting to put some pieces together, uh, some some of the bigger vision in, uh, uh, together. Uh, I do think it would be a fantastic revolutionary thing to introduce to the market that a a, uh, a node protocol with a net uh, deflationary mechanism on our emissions. That's that's all I'm going to go into though right now. Perfect. Wittenberg asks, is the team using any models to project revenue and emissions rates? Uh, if so, how accurate have the models been to the current day? And how is the team calculating a projected revenue from future utilities such as the P2E game? Well, I mean, you can see uh, you, you can see actually some of the modeling that's been done in the uh, most recent Medium article regarding the PDE game. Um, we do have some internal modeling. Um, obviously, it's very difficult to gauge because we, we go through these peaks and valleys of people joining into the ecosystem. We see a batch, a huge batch of new nodes being made, and then it slows down for a little bit and then picks right back up. So it's very difficult for us to predict. Um, but what we're doing is we're really prioritizing focusing on the ecosystem and to allow that buy pressure to really sustain any net emissions that are coming out. Uh, while simultaneously working on heavily on the marketplace and uh, you know being able to have uh, set up a uh, specific date for our node cap as well as a specific node count um, that's something that's still quite a bit of uh, quite far away uh, in the grand scheme of things um, but that's something that we've been actively working towards and making sure that we have uh, covered Excellent. Name asks, uh, is it possible to modify the treasury vote weighting system so that there should be a multiply on the tier of node that you own? That way, more money invested will have more say in the votes. So, for example, the high middle vote weight would be uh, the node count multiplied by one, the fair would be the, the node count multiplied by six, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's something that we're more than happy to look into, um, but uh, you know that's uh, th that's something that's a little bit more difficult because we utilize the snapshot voting, and so it goes out by their predefined options. Um, I'm more than happy to talk to the developers about some form of uh, you know separate weighted voting down to the node tier. Um, it becomes a, l a lot more complex, and, and from our perspective right now, we have um, you know not just one, two, three, or four different things in the works, but we have so many different things in the works that we really want to prioritize the larger scale ecosystem um, over some of the more quality of life things. Um, I know that's something that people would absolutely love, and that's something that we could definitely look at for the future.
Excellent. Ben asks, is there a possibility to switch to a dynamic reward system where returns are based on treasury profits rather than a daily set percentage in order to reach a more sustainable protocol? Um, that's something that we can certainly look into once we have the entire ecosystem built out. Um, but the entire goal here is to offer a pretty consistent return rate to our investors. And the way that that's done is by offering a preset uh, amount of the Thor token that's generated in daily returns. Uh, from our perspective, we really want to prioritize focusing on the buy pressure and allowing that buy pressure to fulfill that sell pressure. Excellent. Uh, Benjamin asks, V2 allows unlimited nodes per wallet. Uh, how is this good for the community? Now, a few whales can buy a large amount of nodes and the distribution gets skewed. Uh, we could very soon require a node cap with a few whales having a thousand nodes and everyone else 30 to 50 because they run out of time compounding. This may be a temporary benefit from purchases, but long term will be bad. I think he's misunderstood the, the feature. So yeah, explain that he's, he's fundamentally misunderstood. Um, you know, having a node cap for for whales there with with, you know, a hundred to one wallet versus a whale getting two wallets or three wallets and building up that two, three hundred. It's literally nothing to whales. So all it does is it separates people from having to make new wallets. Um, and, uh, you know, that's that's just essentially a quality of life improvement. Uh, there's no actual dramatic uh, difference in the way that the protocol operates or the way that, you know, whales can participate within the protocol. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, the whales that are putting in and buying, say, a thousand nodes, as, as that person you know said, um, you know, those people would be in a situation where they put, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars into the ecosystem. And we don't like to punish people. Um, so while they may feel it's unfair, because you know they're at a different level of investments uh it's absolutely fair and literally nothing has changed other than people having to make uh additional wallets within their map perfect a solid stroke asks uh, any plans to tighten the partnership between other uot foundational members uh and if yes how uh, so we have many things in the works with the UOT. Um, the UOT is still uh, yet to launch. Uh, well, ideally, we're going to be launching at the end of this month. Um, but that's something that uh, will happen when we, you know, are a little bit more fleshed out with the UOT and we have a long list of protocols within the um, what to, uh, Thor benefits from the UOT is that inbaked credibility from the UOT. Uh, and also, obviously, uh, as the UOT apply, uh, appeals to a lot more institutional high net worth individuals uh, who want to enter DeFi but have been scared uh, because of all the scams and rug pulls, um, all, obviously, all of those individuals will be allocating percentages of their portfolios to UOT protocols. And of course, Thor is a fundamental founding member of that. Uh, so we do expect that there to be some distinct benefits for Thor. Awesome. Uh, Asad asks, is there any consideration for us to place a cap on the number of claims that can be made per day in order to curb cell pressure? Uh, that's something that we're we're looking in. I mean, once again, we're really prioritizing freedom. Um, we want to allow people to have the freedom to offer, you know, or use their nodes however they like. That's the reason we were the first protocol to introduce uh, constantly increasing rewards rather than rewards being hit in a four hour or twelve hour or twenty four hour cycle. Um, you know, th that's uh, that's that's one of the core beliefs of us, right? Is you know, we need people to be free, and we need to also then just allow people to have utility to utilize those tokens rather than just selling it. So that's the reason we're focusing heavily on our uh, ecosystem plays right now. Um, you know, in in addition, of course, to uh, you know monitoring the the sale pressure and then adjusting our protocol sales to to match that up. Uh, we would rather be in a situation where we're not making money and we're still allowing our community to make money. I think that's a far better, uh, 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 far more beneficial to the most amount of people as possible. Um, so that's the reason right now. Uh, you know, us as a team, we're making nothing. Um, where we have enough in savings to cover salaries and, and to make sure everyone's paid and all that. So that's good. Um, but, you know, from, from our perspective, it makes far more sense giving, um, you know, as much value to our community for our long-term health uh, rather than, you know, just help inflate our own pockets, especially when we're seeing a uh, negative price act. Amazing. Uh, Dwayne Pipe asks, have you considered employing a full-time, well-respected crypto trader to use an allocation of funds with responsible leverage and take advantage of volatility in the market? Yeah, we're in talks with a couple of them right now. The problem is, right, um, even with a well-known individual, it's very difficult just to trust someone with potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars to say a million dollars, right? Um, it's very difficult. So so we're working on multi-sigs and we're, we're forming out partnerships on how that could work. Of course, we have people like David Dalton, who's been performing at a tremendous value to the Thor community, not just through his interactions and involvement with the PDE game, um, but also, you know, leveraging out his connections for potential partners, uh, as well as, you know, the intrinsic value that he provides to the Thor community with his daily TA video. Excellent. 
Uh, James asks if the P2E game is to underperform, what effect would that have on poor financial as a nerd project? Well, I mean, you know, it's it's the same. It would have a negative effect if it was to underperform. That's the reason we're taking our time and making sure that the execution is being done correctly. Um, what we're doing is we're offering a brand new form of game into the play to earn system, uh, and we're developing out this uh, entire game world to be far more fleshed out and involved than anything that you've ever seen in PD. Uh, so we certainly don't expect this to underperform. We expect it to actually exceed expectations. Uh, but that's also why our ecosystem does not consist of single nodes and a, a PDE game. It consists of multiple different um, ecosystem elements that all collectively contribute out to our uh, to the net uh, positive increase in our buy pressure. Perfect. And this is a good question. Tiberius asks, would it be possible to make the voting results of the investment options uh, not visible until they are finished? Uh, that way, people will not be psychologically affected by the fact that a certain investment uh, already has a majority number of votes. Um, that's something that we can certainly look at again. Uh, uh, once again, that's lower on the priority list, though, uh, to be completely honest. Um, you know, this is something that uh, if there's a setting, it, I'll, I'll take a look for the next snapshot vote that I make. And if there's a setting, I'll more than happily uh, click it. Um, but that's something that, you know, uh, realistically, we started off as Discord voting and now we have proper snapshot voting. Uh, I think that's been a huge evolution in our voting mechanisms. Um, and, you know, we want people to know what other people are voting for. Um, I think especially from the last vote, we made the right choice by picking Quant. Perfect. Caddy Skater asks, are there plans to change the LP rewards or the single sided staking to pay out AVAX as opposed to Thor? This will create buy pressure as people can use the AVAX to purchase Thor and they can also use that to pay their node maintenance fees. Not quite, uh, not quite yet. That's something that we're looking at. We'll announce at a later time. Perfect. That's all the written questions we had for now. So, guys, when you put your hands up for the live questions, please don't repeat any of the questions that we just went through. Perfect. Um, if, if you did miss anything, there will be a recording post later. So, yeah, we can go straight ahead into the live section now. Perfect. All right. I'm going to start inviting some people up. I just made the invite here open to everybody. A legend coming in with Larry jokes. Ha. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Lafi, go ahead, brother. I'm struggling with my speakers, so you'll need to come back to me in a second. All right, I'll move on to RG then while we're waiting. Hey, how's it going? I got here a little bit late. I was just wondering um, basically what the team is, uh, the main priority of the team is right now, whether that be the PTE game or the, um, the actual marketplace or maybe uh, the UI, uh, improved UI dashboard. Like I'm, I just kind of want to get an update on like what's the main priority for the team right now. Well, the dashboard is the next thing that's going to be coming out from the ecosystem. But the cool thing is, and the, and the reason that we've expanded and scaled out our team significantly, um, even though over the last couple of weeks here, uh, I mean, you know, we're, we're over 30 people within the Thor organization. Um, and what that does is that allows us to have individual teams that are working on individual tasks. So we have an entire team that's dedicated to the PDE. We have an entire team that's dedicated to the UI. And we have an entire team that's dedicated to the marketplace. Um, we're continuously adding more people on to make sure that we have the ability and the capabilities to execute on each one of these things simultaneously. Um, so the priority is literally all of the above of what you mentioned. Um, that's that's the great thing about having a scale, a, you know, being at the scale that we're at now. Um, so, you know, uh, from our perspective, the number one priority is fleshing out an ecosystem and creating as much buy pressure and utility behind the Thor native token as possible. And that's being done in a conjunctive effort. Uh, so, you know, as I said, the next thing that's coming out is the UI upgrade. Um, but then what's coming out after that is the PDE. Then what's coming out after that is the marketplace. I think we've been pretty darn clear about exactly what's coming out next and uh, where where the longer term roadmap stands. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for uh, taking my question. No problem, brother. Thank you very much for your question. All right, Lafi, are you ready? Well, I would say I was born ready, but I clearly wasn't a moment ago. So, <laughs> anywho, um, I just kind of wanted to point out that you're a little bit quick to give credit to price action to uh, the, the change in the contract when I said that once when Big Black got a CEO role, <laughs> price action would be affected more than anything. And look at us, you know, two weeks ago on that. You know what? And price you know was going what? Down, and then we did it, and price shoots up. So I'm just saying, it's well, probably not a coincidence. I, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy that we gave into your demands, and now we're no longer seeing your constant Heimdall cell pressure. That was really killing us, man. So I'm really happy we were able to get past that. 
I hate to do it in the strong arm, you know, but, you know, a nice giant's got to do what a nice giant's got to do sometimes. Um, I, I did it for the, you know, the best best thing I could do for the protocol was make sure that happened. So, Hell yeah. Um, a, other thing was, so 30% of profits through the um, through the game uh, would be moving to Thor Financial. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious. I mean, it doesn't have to be an exact amount, but the other 70%, how is that allocated? Is some of that going to be put towards partners or um uh well it's going to partners it's it's going to partners Uh, obviously you know as as i said the pde guys have a very big meeting tomorrow in new york and they're currently in new york uh getting ready for that meeting um and so you know obviously uh those kind of partnerships would take a percentage uh equity cut um but then the remaining uh goes to the you know active team that's developing out there um, obviously, they're not collecting salaries from Thor, so their their revenue comes from the success of the of the game itself. Um, so what Thor has done is we've funded essentially the development while these guys are working on their sweat equity. Um, you know, making sure that their money comes in um, with the game, and that comes in their form of equity. Uh, so that's the reason you know Thor has both the governance token and thirty percent. Okay. Do we know? generally what allocation is is for the developers and then what is for par- what we have left over for like partners and things along those lines um well it's approximately 20 percent left over for partners and the remaining 50 percent uh, being split beyond the uh the core developers on the pd okay cool yeah. those are all uh all i had to say thank you so much for your time awesome thank you very much lofty all right uh tali go ahead tali Loki, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you perfect. All right. Um, hey, so I did have a couple questions. You just clarified one of them um, by the previous uh, speaker, so appreciate that. Uh, the second question I had was, um, have we ever looked into ASIC mining um, as a, a means of income um, for our ecosystem, um, i.e. Bitcoin, Kadena, um, you know, seem to be some pretty, pretty good opportunities in ASIC mining. I was just curious. What yeah, your I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely not looking at ASIC mining. I'm not a fan of ASIC mining, to be completely honest. Uh, I don't like purpose-built machines that are built to uh, mine one coin, and especially when that coin's resistance goes up uh, and, and the amount of rewards that are generated from that, uh, that machine goes down. Uh, I'm far more interested in actually having GPU miners that gives us the flexibility to mine any proof-of-work uh, uh, coin out there. Um, having said that, that's something that we're certainly looking at. Um, you know, there is uh, some partnerships and there are some talks that we're having internally about that. Um, but that's something that we'll be going into more detail at a later date. Sounds good. Now, I actually GPU mine. And the only reason I didn't um, recommend GPU mining is obviously there is some uncertainty in the GPU mining um, arena with ETH going to 2.0 and all that available hash rate. You sure. Know, not really sure where this going to go. So sure, that's sure. But in 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 my, in my opinion, when you have a single purpose built machine to mine on one coin and one chain, uh, then you have even more of the uh, of that operational risk. Um, because then you start to see, let's say, two, uh, Ethereum 2.0 comes out, and all of a sudden, all of those miners start going over to uh, Bitcoin. Then you're facing a situation where the resistance levels of that chain goes up significantly. The proportional rewards go down significantly. Um, I far more, I'm a far far bigger fan personally of uh, GPU miners because that allows you allows us to have the freedom to go to any proof of work coin that we want, rather than focusing on just one and being beholden to one chain. All right, thanks, Loki. You're very welcome, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, when Moon, you're up. You're out there, Loki. I'm all right, man. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, love everything you guys been doing before. Hello. Uh, been here since nearly the beginning. Hello, hello. Hey, Dimitri, you... please go on mute. I'll call on you when we're ready. Yeah, I just had a question. Um, not so important, but it was about uh the validators and Phantom mm-hmm. One. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the past, you talked about those that um, that stake their fandom that would, they would receive all rewards or something in the, that direction. No, no, no. You you receive phantom when you when you stake to a delegator. Uh, you... oh, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. I know you get phantom, but you said that those that uh, those that stake with the phantom would also receive all rewards or incentives in the future or something. Like that. 
Def I definitely did not, my friend. Um, the staking to a validator is the same thing as soft, as single sided staking on any coin, right? So uh, yeah. any proof of work coin has a staking program, and that allows um, delegators to delegate out their holdings out to a validator, and that's what uh, provides the consensus mechanism that validates blocks on a proof of uh, stake coin. So that's the reason your rewards are in phantom, is the validator generates phantom and then pr d distributes that delegated phantom uh, proportionally out to the delegators while taking a cut. That's the reason it makes sense for both the validator side and the, and the delegator side. Um, there's no way that there, there's no way to incorporate Thor that's also on AVAX um, to 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 uh, provide supplemental rewards. All right, yeah, yeah. cool. Thank you. That's what I want to ask. And stuff clear. Awesome. Well, no worries, brother. Thank you very much. All right, Fallen Dot Thor, go ahead. Hey, yeah. Uh, quick question. Uh, so I. Sure, I'm not the only one, but I've seen the recent push for uh, people to join the PDE team in terms of positions. And I was just wondering, are these positions that we are filling out because of uh, extra need, or are these positions that are needing to be filled because somebody left? And I'm just thinking that about that from you know investment perspective, or, or is this kind of stuff putting us behind. Uh, we're definitely not behind. We're hitting all the milestones that we said we're going to hit. Um, what we're looking to do is we're looking to flesh out a team so we don't have all uh, a bunch of work being done by a lower amount of people. From our from our perspective, the more hands that we have on deck, the more that we can build out, the more fleshed out the universe can be, the better the game can be as a whole, um, and the uh, and the quicker that we can release it. That's, that's the entire point. Um, we're looking to expand the team, not because people have left, but because we'd like to expand the team and expand the amount of people actively working on each one of the ecosystem functions. Awesome. That, that's what I was hoping to hear, obviously, but I uh, just wanted to double check. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, man. I'm going to move on here to Thor Silo. Go ahead. Okay, can't hear you, Thor Silo, so I'm going to invite some more people up. Come on up. All right, love nft.thor. Go ahead. Hey, Loki. Um, thank you to you and the entire team for all the price action and all the hard work over the past couple of weeks. It's been phenomenal, so thank you for that. And um, my question is, I mean, it's it's assuming it's in transit uh, with the PDE game and the, the um, marketplace once those things sort of roll out. But I'm just wondering what your thoughts are specifically. Hello. Okay. Dimitri, I need you to go on mute, brother. I'm going to send you back down to the audience. And uh, Dimitri, this is the second time that you've done this. So please, if you're going to come up on the uh, stage, please go on mute. Sorry about that, Love NFT. Go ahead. No worries. Um, so yeah, so just around marketing, Loki, in terms of obviously when you're releasing a game in a marketplace, there's marketing built into that. But I'm just curious um, in terms of all of the incredible sort of strategy that you guys are doing on your end, how the marketing of that sort of plays a part and if there's out funds allocated to marketing specifically, I just would love to hear your sort of big picture on that. Sure. I mean, I, I think the one thing that we've demonstrated over the three months that our protocol has been running is that we're very good at marketing. Um, I'm going to, Thorzillo also, please, uh, he's also going down. Uh, please, when you guys, when you come up on stage, go on mute. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think the one thing that we've really demonstrated and the one thing that we've really proved to everybody is that we know how to market. Uh, we've grown a protocol from from you know a couple hundred people in our Discord server to now over fifty thousand people in our Discord server. We're approaching fifty thousand followers on Twitter. Um, I think it's pretty demonstrable that we know how to get the message out there. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be utilizing very similar strategies to how we've marketed out Thor uh, to market out both the marketplace and the PDE game. Perfect. I love it. Okay, awesome. awesome. And thank, thank you again. Looking forward to everything ahead. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you very much for your questions. All right, the Rick, go ahead. Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Uh, going to keep this short and sweet. For those newbies that have compromised wallets, any talk of the migration to a safer wallet for or any projected date, any more info on that? Uh, it's going to happen when the nodes are NFTs in the marketplace. 
Understood. Okay. Yeah. Once, it, what, once it's a tradable asset, then people, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be an issue there with compromised wallets of people having their nodes stolen. And that's going to be an issue that we're going to tackle uh, when we get closer to that matter. Um, but having said that, uh, you know, everybody out there that currently has an exploited wallet, just make sure that you're up to date and ready to go as soon as the nodes are NFTs, because uh, that way you can transfer it to an uncompromised wallet. But this is, again, the whole reason why we preach about wallet security so much. Uh, it's very important to us that everyone knows to to really protect out your wallet and stop clicking on you know uh, make sure that you're verifying every domain that you're going to and you're only connecting your wallet to legitimate uh, websites so man, i appreciate you putting the safeties in place for those that are trying to migrate without losing so great staying positive Sucks, awesome but appreciate you guys all right brother all right man Best of luck, and uh, you know I, I wish you the best brother and just hold off until uh in, until they're nfts all right, uh, Chucky, go ahead. All right, your mic's not working, so I've invited some more people up here. Hey. All right, I'm going to move on to Maxing v, uh, VT dot Thor. Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, all right. So I was wondering, like I saw in the like uh, buybacks uh, channel or the buybacks you did and stuff. I was wondering, would it be a possibility like to do like a buybacks, put some that buyback tour in like uh, staking or LP and like burn all the rewards or something like that? I don't know if it's like a possibility or something. Well, that that would make not much sense, right? Um, because essentially we're contributing Thor to a single-sided staking pool while burning out the rewards that are generated from that contributed Thor. So it's it's kind of a net zero to the protocol as a whole. Um, but as I say, uh, buybacks are going to be done uh, as the market conditions improve and, and as we have more ability. Um, what we don't want to do is we don't want to rob our treasury to do momentary buybacks that are bought out and so people sell on those buybacks all the time. And then we're essentially out a net, a, a net negative while still maintaining that initial position. That's the reason we have not done buybacks recently. And that's the reason that we're that we're holding out for better market conditions because you know the, the real reason of the buybacks is to have ability uh, due to the profits and utilize profits to have those momentary buybacks and and alleviate some of the sell pressure um but what we're also we're looking to do and and what we teased out here a little bit earlier um that buyback ability can come in multiple different ways especially when we have nft nodes in the marketplace all right thank you very much all right bro. and uh, thanks for everything you're doing you're welcome brother thank you very much all right chucky have you figured out your mic situation All right, uh, you have it. I'm gonna move you down to the audience. Um, hopefully you can go over to a voice channel and try to figure it out yourself. Uh, Goat, Royal Panther, go ahead. Hey, how you doing? How's everything? It's going all right, Brody. How's it going good, with you? Good, man. Thanks a lot for everything. You know, I know uh, you're doing a lot of work, Dan. It definitely sounds like you know your stuff, so I really appreciate that. I'm I, sure we all do. I appreciate that. Hey, Seafrix, um, this is your shout-out right you, now. Looking at those four investments that you guys were had posted in the announcements. Um, do you guys project any uh, sort of uh, revenue coming from those instantly? Because I see that the projection for the uh, risk is medium to long length. Mm -hmm. So um, no, uh, the, the the current investments that we've, that, uh, the, the investment options there were far more long-term based investment options. Uh, especially with what the community chose, uh, Quant, which is a fantastic and, in my opinion, was the right choice. So I'm very happy that the community voted that way. Um, but that's something that we're waiting for, you know, both both simultaneous price auction, uh, uh, pr uh, price action and adoption. Um, the cool thing with Quant is is re realistically they're, they're they're institutional level partnerships, and we expect to see some big things happening from that project, uh, you know, within the next year or so. Oh, excellent, because I actually, that's the one I selected, but that's the one you guys prefer to, as well? Yeah, well, that's the one that I, I mean, look, you know, the DeFi strategist out there, he supplied the report and did all the due diligence on the project. Um, me, as, in, as you know, forgive my language here, but an idiot degen, um, I wanted to go with Quant, and I personally voted for Quant. Right, right. And what's the project, projected income on your investment off of that uh, quant? Investment oh, it's, it's really difficult because we're talking about price mm -hmm. action and whether or not it's a bear in a bull, a bull market, right? 
So I mean, it's and unfortunately, it this isn't you know the, the the this isn't like the stock market where where you can have a more expected return because the inherently the volatility within the crypto market is at such an extreme. Um, but what we do expect is we expect to see some positive price action, especially coming into a bull run, and especially as Quant continues to flesh out their partnership. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're very welcome, brother. Thank you very much. Okay. okay bye. Uh, God of Thunder, go ahead. Testing. Testing. I can, you can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, great. All right. Hey. Yeah, how you guys doing today? Um, so I apologize if this question has already been asked because I just jumped on mm -hmm. 10 minutes ago. Uh, but my question was with the uh, reward distribution pool. Um, how, I was one curious how long you guys are going to keep it at this 100% for the uh, reward distribution pool. And if you have any automatic setups for it to turn back to this or turn off at certain price points uh no so so like all of the protocol cells are manually adjusted uh, adjusted right so we would announce when when if if and when the that uh that that is going to change um but what we want to do is we want to maintain the zero percent sales for as long as possible um luckily you know because we have been existing for a few months now um we do have you know enough money in reserves that we can continuously pay out our salaries and we can make sure the development doesn't get uh d d doesn't get hung up for any reason um but uh you know it's it's more of a play by ear scenario and certainly with the price action that we've seen we see no reason to 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 flip it back anytime soon Great. Um, and you think that the um, upward trend is because of the uh, new breakdown? I think so. I, I, it's really hard to, uh, really hard to tell, right? Um, but you know, from my opinion, I think that what that did is that really illustrated to the larger DeFi community. I don't think you know practically that the re reduced sales uh, equated to the increase in the price that we saw. Um, but I do think that the perception of that contributed a large amount of confidence back into the market and a large amount of confidence into people who maybe weren't weren't in the ecosystem because of the sale breakdown now entered the ecosystem because of the sale differences. Um, so, you know, I, I think it had more of a tertiary effect, um, but w without a question, I, I think that that was the major driver of what we saw for our positive price action. Great. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for your time, and I appreciate all the hard work and uh, looking forward to what comes in the future. No, thank Thanks you so very much, man. Thank you. Have a great day, brother. All right. Uh, Willis.Thor, go ahead. All right, you got to come off mute there. I'm going to have to send you back down if you don't. Go ahead. All right. Uh, BH Headshots, go ahead. Hey, Loki, can you hear me? I can hear you perfect. Awesome. So I am somebody who's very new to this whole D5 space, everything. Thor was actually the first Node project that I got involved in. <laughs> well, welcome, my friend. Uh, yeah. Um, I got to say... The mods, the devs, everybody on this team who's been working hard for Thor. I just want to say thank you to everybody because this has been a wild ride and I'm still looking forward to the future. <laughs> so like, are us. Uh, we are like, too. It's look, it's, we, we, uh, I'm not sure how long you've been in, in our ecosystem, but I, I mean, if you can look at our price, we've had some massive ups and we've had some massive downs. It's been a, it's been a big uh, uphill battle uh, and it's been something that we've, uh, we've continuously fought the entire time. Um, you know, yeah. there's a lot of other projects that, that gave into the pressure that, that, you know, had issues, similar issues to what we had. And for whatever reason, decided to throw in the towel. Um, you know, I'm hopefully it's very clear to the larger community now. We're not going anywhere. Um, we're ready to take on any hurdle that comes at us and we're more than happy to jump over that hurdle We're more than happy to clear that hurdle and we're more than happy to set up the groundwork uh, for the future of DeFi Yeah, my first note that I bought I bought it 2,000 Canadian so as, a fellow, as a fellow Canadian I love you, brother. I love you. <laughs> You're very welcome, brother. And I hope you enjoy some positive price action. I think we have a lot more uh, positive. Uh, we, uh, I mean, look, you know, we can all celebrate and pat ourselves on the back for the price action, all that. It's great. Um, I want to see some more, uh, you know, constant uptrends in our price. And I think that it's going to happen as we continuously unveil more uh, ecosystem elements and provide more and more buy pressure to our native token. Yeah, definitely. I just wanted to come in and say thank you to you and the devs and all the mods. You guys have been fantastic. Thank oh, you well, so I, I so appreciate that, man. I, I appreciate that. If it's okay with you, I'm going to move on, though, to another person's question. Yeah, for uh, sure. Pe people always get annoyed by the people who just come up and say thank you. But I, I just want to say, personally, I thank you. And I appreciate those kind words, my friend. 
Uh, Have a good one. All right, brother. Ciao. All right, Z, go ahead. Hey, aloha, Loki. Mahalo for all the hard work you guys have been all doing from out here in Hawaii. Um, you can hear me, right? I can hear you perfect. Awesome, sweet. Um, I, first time, this is my first note, just like uh, brother before us, super grateful. Um, I was talking with some good friends, and we were discussing possible investments, and I was wondering if y'all have been thinking at all about integrating some form of tangible in-world bridge between the virtual and reality in the form of perhaps like a property and then having a secondary token and then people would buy forward to get that token in order to set up you know rent or kind of no i i I actually i i actually have a background in real estate i i I actually owned a pro i own and ran a property management company before i went full-time crypto um so i'm actually intimately familiar with the rental market as well as cap rates and and the expected returns uh unfortunately Mm -hmm. when when we offer returns like what we get in DeFi, um it's very difficult to find that in the real world um, and so when you're talking about a capital investment of hundreds of thousands of dollars for a property or a real estate property, even when you don't deal with a mortgage situation, the amount of monthly income that's generated from the rent rolls um, is really insignificant in, the, in, 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 you know, uh, in, in respect to how that capital could be used. Um, you know, that hundred, uh, you know, that couple hundred, maybe five hundred thousand okay. dollars could be used to generate far more in the way of yields than, you know, a capital investment inside of a rental property or something like that. Having said that, we are big fans of off market uh, things. Um, you know, there are regulatory hurdles that we need to jump over. You know, there are issues with a decentralized uh, company owning real estate or, or, or e- <laughs> even owning and operating registered businesses within whatever jurisdiction that we'd be looking at. Um, so there's certainly some issues that need to be worked out there. Uh, we're definitely prioritizing, um, you know, on- on-chain things right now um, and diversifying our on-chain investments uh, as well as, you know, reinvesting within our own ecosystem. Uh, those are the real uses of the treasury right now. And, and the, the, uh, that's really where we see the most amount of bang for buck. Um, having said that, we're more than happy to look at, you know, potential off-chain things in the future, especially if we have, you know, pretty insane buy pressure, maybe even a deflating emission rate. Um, and then understanding, you know, that we may have some more money that we could, you know, use and not expect necessarily the same kind of returns that we experience on chain. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, do you mind if I ask one more question? Go ahead. Um, in, in regards to the metaverse, um, I, know I missed a bunch of the other ANAs, um, but is there any um, thought of us chain interaction with some of like say Block, uh, Blocktopia and stuff like that, um, of having a place in there as well as Sandbox? We're we're more than happy and, and, and we're I mean, we have no problem talking with and, and potentially talking partnerships with other, with other organizations and with other projects. Um, but there's no way of, uh, you know, I, I can't go into detail without anything firmed up. Um, so, you know, yeah. we're certainly open to the concept of it. Um, we're we're really allowing those people to see the value within our ecosystem and come reach out to us. And then uh, and then, you know, we can evaluate what possible win win scenarios and what win win partnerships we could derive uh, from those meetings. Um, so, you know, at, at this point, it's still a little bit more up in the air, but we're certainly open to it. And, and that's something we can definitely be looking at for the future. Awesome. Exciting. Well, I just picked up my third Odin today. So thank you, brother. I'm looking forward to the future and off we go. All right, brother, you too. <laughs> Perfect. Sparky, go ahead. I try to do vape niche for you guys, and I just totally screwed it up. So sorry, everybody. That was cringe. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Sparky. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I just want to thank you and the mods. You guys vape are nation. awesome. I love, I love being in Thor and uh, been following it since you guys kicked your doors open. Um, <laughs> my question is, I know you've already touched on compromised wallets and my question is a little bit more specific because i do have a compromised wallet that has nodes attached to it Mm -hmm. and i'm aware of the nfts my question is this i'm not able to pay the maintenance fees that are coming because i cannot deposit avax without them taking it right away immediately yeah yeah so my question is once it becomes an nft and and they're movable are these all going to be able to be done from the purchasing side in our new wallets in order to – there, there's just no way to deposit anything, any gas or anything into the wallet to ship it out 
Well, I mean, uh, the, the uh, you know, from my experience with people with compromised wallets, um, you know, you look in a situation where, you know, they actively, the scammers actively monitor their wallets, but there are, you know, let's say a 15 to 30 minute increment that, that, that you're going to, that, that they're not going to be actively looking at. Um, and that's what I would highly recommend is as soon as the nodes become NFTs, transfer just enough in there for gas, immediately move them out. Like, you know, I, I, we will be announcing pre, uh, you know, exactly the time and date that, that, you know, they will become NFTs. So you can then take that asset, move it to a new wallet and then, you know, catch up on the maintenance fees. Okay. Because I, I actually tried to hurry and pay my maintenance fee. And before I could switch it over and get back into Thor, it my all my apex was gone um and it uh, it was less than a, a two minute period of, of going from coinbase to to metamask and then from metamask going to to Thor and and typing in you know and, and trying to open that wallet so i mean i i hope that works out i just i really hope maybe there can be some consideration for for us not being able to do that that it can be done all from purchaser side and not from Unfortunately, it, it, it can't. It, 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 it can't because it's a registered asset within a specific wallet. You know, if, if Thor was able to withdraw from your wallet that NFT, that would be a significant uh, security issue. Got it. So I, I would highly recommend following the steps that I told you. And I, I think you more than likely got unlucky when when uh, when you did that. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we can only do so much. Uh, we, we really preach about wallet security. We have entire channels with guides dedicated to show you how to protect your wallet. Um, you know, th this is yeah. something that, that we're that we're, we're trying to do everything that we can for people with compromised wallets. Um, but, you know, no, I, I, our, our power in, in, in that is limited to a regard. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate you. That was my question, and uh, I, I love the AMAs. Thanks, sir. Keep it up. <laughs> You're much appreciated. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, once they're NFTs, you're going to be able to, you know, have a little bit more control over your wallets again, and, and you know, uh, make sure you're protected. Perfect. Uh, Killer Seiko, go ahead. Hey, okay. How are you? Hello? Hi, I can hear you. Can hear you? Yep. Uh, well, uh, first of all, thanks for the team and everything that you're doing, especially the tragedy that you made it for 100% for the price uh, to go up a bit. I don't know any other project that does this, uh, any other design project, so thank you, for first of all. Uh, I have a few questions regarding for the game that's coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. What makes you different than other games? I, for example, I know a lot of games regarding the cryptocurrency, uh, all of them are not, uh, are like in time they're decreasing their price, like they're not ahead of the market, like uh, maybe people get bored of the game, maybe they're not updating, or maybe the, ro the roadmap is taking too long. What What is your strategy on making the game more fun for the people? You know, eventually people uh, disregard the cryptocurrency, people will join well, the There's game a couple reasons. Fun. There's a, uh, to interrupt you here, there's a couple reasons, okay. right? Uh, the number one reason is most of these play to earn games have inflationary mechanisms to where they're constantly printing mm -hmm. more of their native governance token. And what that does is that drives down the inherent uh, volume in price of that token. Uh, we've seen that with rebase DAOs and we've seen that wow. really proven out with wow. rebase DAOs. Um, so the difference is, is we're using our Thor native token, which has a fixed supply. So first of all, it's not going to be inflationary because it's all dealing with an a million fixed supply. Uh, the second of all, um, you know, if you look at other play to earn games, they're usually very simplistic games. They're when they're not the most fun games in the world. Um, and they're usually at a much lower level of, um, <clears throat> of, of replayability. So what we've done, and, and you can look at, you know, games like Fortnite, for example, have, you know, an immense amount of replayability because of the, uh, type of game that they are uh, and that's the reason we've really wanted to make sure everyone knows that we're building out a proper battle royale game where it's going to have play to earn elements as has played uh, um, you know player versus environment and then we want to patch in player versus player then we want to patch in uh you know vr support and different device support um our whole goal here is we started out by trying to create a really fun and addictive game and then adding pde in uh, later rather than adding in pde and then trying to make a a, a kind of crappy game just to support that pde mechanics Mm -hmm. uh, because I was playing, uh, I was I tried a game like a uh, cryptocurrency game that you gain uh, coin, cryptocurrencies. I, I'm not gonna name the game for for their sake, for other people's. 
like the ad one issue. If you don't have a team, you're gonna get screwed because you you will decrease your uh, rank and stuff like that. So uh, uh, do you have a proper matchmaking server for the battle royale and everything you have planned? Because well, it's, it's launching. It's launching is it's launching as player versus environment. So that's what allows people to have both singles, duos, trios, and quads uh, to be able to you know mm. uh, play in their own game world. Um, but you know we mm. are we are working very hard on the play to, uh, play PVP element and you know the. You, uh, it's going to it's going to be fun even if you don't play games you're you know there's going to be several opportunities for you to utilize uh your thor uh your thor tokens as well as your thor all right that's good to hear uh last question uh maybe some people ask this question i don't know uh what's the plan for the thor coin like for example you know the, the decrease of the price some people are buying it for for example uh, buying five tours and waiting for the price to go up a bit and they're selling it do you have a plan so that the people when they invest in tour not buying the note just in the normal investment uh, do they have a perk so that, like, for example, if you keep your, if you buy a tour, you will get a privilege of, for example, I don't know, boost or something like that. If you keep your tour, like, do you have a roadmap so that when people invest in the tour coins, not the nodes, uh, like, do they do, they will have perks if the investment is a huge no, amount. No, do, no, and there's, there's no other coin that exists on the market that it provides extra perks for holding the coin. Um, you know, what, what, what you are is you're talking about swing traders and what, what we're not going to be limiting swing traders. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding more utility to our ecosystem and more uses for those tokens and then allow people to make their own decisions on what they want to do. Oh, so, for example, you can buy something out of Tor coins, for example. Yes. Like that kind of. Uh, yeah, like oh, that, that, like that, that. like we have like 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 we have a full fledged marketplace and NFT launch pad and you can utilize those Thor tokens to buy NFTs. Mm -hmm. Or you that, can utilize great. those that's Thor it. tokens within the game universe. Or you can utilize your Thor tokens in X, Y, and Z other utilities that we're planning out. Oh, that that's great. That's that's amazing. Uh, so I was going to say I forgot the other question. Uh, for for now, this is it. Uh, that, that's it. Thank you for the answer, Thor, uh, for Loki. Uh, Hoping for the best, and the, uh, for me, this is the first uh, note that I invested, and I think I made a good investment uh, because uh, regarding I made my research for other nodes. Uh, for me, the best the note, and for if, especially the team, is the Tor uh, uh, oh. Tor tokens. I I so, so appreciate that, man. I so appreciate that, and I'm really looking forward over time to help you continuously prove that uh, concept that you made the right call more and more real. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, try, I'm convincing people to invest. Like I've convinced two people that invested in Tor, and uh, so I'm trying to convince other people too, so that they can invest the notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, that's awesome. Yeah, because well, they, I'm saying it's reliable. There's no rug and stuff like that. So they can they when they I say that kind of words like it's reliable. Don't worry, I guarantee it. They 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 will say, alright, so we can invest on it. You know, there people are afraid on especially DeFi uh, investing in DeFi because some tokens they make the rock pool oh yeah it's it's the scams you know, it's wild west it's like terrible that. it's it's terrible and and right now the DeFi ecosystem is getting worse um i'm seeing more and yeah. more rugs pull up and i'm seeing more and more forks of uh you know whatever x y or z node node, node protocol come out and it's really it's 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 really disheartening for the entire industry um that's the reason we're working so hard to debut the union of transparency and give investors a real safe ecosystem of protocols that they're going to be able to invest in and know that they're not going to get scammed um, you know, we can never guarantee that every protocol is going to work. You know, there there are inherent problems and there's risks associated in this ecosystem. Um, but we certainly think it's high time that the that the risks of people investing in um, people half expecting to get rug pulled or, or scammed. Uh, those days need to be over. And that's exactly what we're looking to achieve with the union of transparency. Yes, true. Like some uh, nodes are some DeFi projects are in for six months and they're out, you know, like that. That's really, really hard. Like, yeah, uh, I, I truly believe in Tor. It's going to be years and years, years and years and coming. And we're going to be the most uh, highest earned and the strongest uh, DeFi project in history. I hope that's <laughs> so the, that's the game the plan. Keep up. That's the game plan. Look, it, 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 it'll be a nice, beautiful day when uh, when we eventually see Thor in that top 100 market cap. And that's that's what my goal is. Um, so I, I appreciate all those kind words. If it's okay with you, I'm going to move on to somebody else because uh, you've had quite a bit of air time here. All right. Um, but thank you for your thank questions, you brother.
Thank you, brother. Have All a good right. day. Bye you bye. too, man. Ciao, ciao. All right, uh, Mac Banny, go ahead. All right, Mac Banny, uh, you're still on mute, so I'll, you know you got to figure that out. Uh, Couch Warrior Dot Thor, go ahead. I can hear you just quiet. I got to move up your volume. Uh, go ahead. All right. So my question for you is uh, the um, the roulette stuff, the, the silver. Are you guys planning to use utility with Thor with that? What do you mean? So like you're, uh, I know there's been a lot of ideas going out there about, you know, you could use Thor to buy silver or doing the poker stuff with the Thor to buy a certain amount of silver. Are you guys starting to use utility or want to use utility with Thor with, with the silver on the Discord? We uh, we we do have some ideas for that, um, and that's something that I'll be talking with the moderator team um, after that, uh, uh, you know, after our today's AMA. Um, but that's something that we'll be introducing uh, when the time is right. We just want to make sure we have the systems. All right. Cool. Uh, second question for you is, uh, what do you guys think of Etherstone putting in their white paper that they're going to outdo you guys? <laughs> uh well i i i wish them i wish them the truly the best of luck um you know i i i i'm not a huge fan of the zero sum game where you know it's this weird competition um i think uh you know people's performances and protocols performances are going to speak for themselves um you know i'm more than happy to to have a you know a, a a healthy competition with whatever project wants to compete with us uh it's no problem i think they have a lot of catching up to do and uh i wish them the best of luck Hey, 100%, man. You guys are doing great. Um, no, it's, a, it's the best form of flattery seeing that in the white paper that you guys are name dropped. So I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 have, I have seen some screenshots of it, and I do have to chuckle to myself. Um, but that's, uh, I mean, look, you know, it, 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 they, they have some high aspirations, and we, and, and we certainly more than happy to welcome up, uh, welcome up to the big boy table when they're ready. 100%. All right, I appreciate your time, man. All right, brother, Thanks, you man. too. Ciao, ciao. All right, uh, DB937, uh, go ahead. I oh, can't hear you, brother. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear you. Is there any possible future plans of, for Thor to retain all their liquidity? Um, that's something that we're certainly, yeah, we, we, we do like, we do like the, we do like protocol owned liquidity. That is something that we're looking at. But once again, uh, we're really prioritizing, uh, in the ecosystem prior to, you know, making some larger pulls like that. Um, you know, it's the same thing why people ask why we, why we're not doing a subnet chain and stuff like that. Um, I think that there's, the, I think there's stages in which these protocols get to. Uh, and I think that there, that, you know, we can't walk before we, uh, we can't, you know, we can't run before we can walk. And right now we're, uh, we're toddling and, and we're getting to the stage where we're walking on our own two feet. And that's going to be happening through our ecosystem. And once we're at that stage, I think then we're ready to look at the next goal. Awesome. Cause of course you could control all pressures at that point. That would be fantastic. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. All right, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, Mac Banny, giving you another chance here. Go ahead. All right, you still can't figure out your mic? I'm going to send you back down to the audience so you can figure it out. Uh, Shaolin, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yes, I just wanted to know about uh, taxes, uh, if it's uh, fixed, if you can pay tax uh, now or we should uh, wait. And uh, oh, but can't figure out your mic. I'm gonna send you back down to the audience so you can figure it out. Uh, Shaolin, go ahead. Hello. 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 I can hear you. I can hear you. Yes, I just wanted to know about uh, taxes. Uh, if it's uh, fixed, if you can pay tax uh, now, or we should uh, wait. And uh, oh, but taxes, if if we can pay uh, with Avax, or we have to pay uh, with USDT. Uh. So are, I think you're talking about maintenance fees. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And and that is paid in AVAX, not USDT. <laughs> no, super. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know where you got USDT from, um, but it, but it, it's 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 always been AVAX, my friend. <laughs> um now 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 like you can pay now um uh you know but uh all node fees aren't due until april 5th 
Um, and what we're doing is we're trying to see one price action of Thor and two price action of AVAX. Um, so it's going to be up to you on, on when the most opportune times are to pay. Um, you know, obviously AVAX has seen a recent pump, so that, so it might make sense. Um, but, uh, you know, it's taken us a little while to have our scrapers catch up with the AVAX price. So it's still charging for an Odin, for example. Uh, it's still charging 1.1 AVAX. And uh, right now that's a little bit over $80. So it's, it's going to be up to you as an individual. You can choose when you want to pay for it. You can do... you. If you log into the D app, you will see your pay and pay node fees that are there. Uh, and if you scroll down to the actual informational section of your node, you're going to be able to see the due date. Uh, that's right beside your uh, your your AVAX and your Phantom RPC endpoint. Um, so that's going to be up to you. Uh, but just remember that they're not due until the fifth. Okay. Okay. Super. Super. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Bye. Bye. Uh, Web rigs. Go ahead. Greetings, Asgardians. I had a question on compounding. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, I can understand the uh, concept of as each node earns 12 and a half, that you can compound to get another Thor node. I understand that. However, when the entire tier across the tier has the 12 and a half, it wouldn't let me compound that into a fifth node. Do you have God mode? No, I don't. That's why. So God mode, God mode, one of the biggest perks of owning one of every node allows you to cross compound and utilize all tier rewards to compound into whatever tier you want. I thought that was across the different tiers, not across a single tier. Yeah, but I mean, if, if you're trying, so you're saying that you, let's say, for example, you own a Freya, you own a Thor and you own a Heimdall, you don't own an Odin. Okay. Um, and you're trying to cross compound uh, all all three of those collected pending rewards over to a new Thor tier. That's cross compounding across tiers. Okay, I understand that. What I had was four Thor nodes. Each one did not have 12 and a half, but together, all four of the Thor nodes within that tier had more than the 12 and a half. Then, and it then, you let me compound then you should. The then, then, then you should. And if you can't, please open up a support ticket. Uh, you know, and an AMA is not a great place to ask for technical questions like. That. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, brother. All right, Prad, go ahead. Come on, Prad. You're you're usually Johnny on the spot. Come on. Get your mic working. All right, I'm going to move on to Eric, and then you're up next, Pratt. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. You can hear me? I can hear you. Hey, Loki. Um, I just want to be, I guess, a little quick. Uh, I did join a little late, so I apologize if this has been uh, already asked, but I was just curious about the CERTIC audit. Has that been um, sent in yet? Uh, so... We put a delay on that, and that is because, and this is something we haven't announced yet, but a lot of people have been talking about uh, the taxes, uh, the tax situation. So what we do, we're, what we're doing is we're working on a tax solution that's going to be introducing a scaling uh, tax model. Um, you know, that's that, that's something that people have been requesting exponentially. Uh, but the thing is, when you're adding a new thing to a contract, if you send them out for audit, all of a sudden that nullifies the audit. So what we're doing is we're getting that t tax situation fixed and then sending it out for audit. Um, we already have okay. Certic ready to go. Okay, I gotcha. So, uh, is there an estimated ETA on the the tax being built in the con the new V two contract? Is you know anticipation it's, it's, be sent out? It's currently being worked on now, so I, I I don't have an estimated ETA. I'm expecting it within days. Um, but okay. I'll be keeping the community updated, and then obviously as soon as that new tax situation there is fixed, uh, uh you know, is fixed, and we no longer have just a flat tax, we have a sliding tax that's going to encourage people to, to 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 hold and to and to not claim like crazy. Um, that's when we'll be submitting everything to Certic. We already have the so, relationship with Certic, and and they're already ready to go. Okay. So for the the tax um, side of it, I guess I was just curious on that for the the um, variable tax. Is that you mean like per node you're going to have a variable tax based on how, when you claim and how much? Or uh, that's something that we're going to be going into more detail once it's fleshed out and built. Okay, it's currently gotcha. in the process of being built, uh, but it's going to okay. be very similar. I mean, like, you know, the problem is, right, when we had the ROT system, uh, everyone complained yeah. about how complicated it was. And then we introduced that flat ta flax tax system that obviously has had a hit to the pr price action. And so what we have to do is we have to do a fusion of the two. Um, so when we uh, when uh, when we're ready to introduce that to the community, we will be introducing that to the community. Um, and then once that's in effect, we'll be submitting, submitting everything out to Certic. OK, perfect. 
I, I was curious about the um the V two contract. Uh, you know, it, since it was it was deployed, mm -hmm. it went amazingly smooth from at least my perspective, and I assume most other people's perspective. But I was wondering, um, on your guys' side, uh, during the deployment, was there anything that you guys saw that that um how like a uh, uh, lessons learned, I guess, that you guys might be able to share with us or anything? It went remarkably smooth. Um, you know, okay. the, that was the cool, cool thing is the major, like the node manager contracts, um, you know, little known fact, uh, when every tier changed and you had to re and accept that new contract, congratulations to you, that node manager contract was on V2 already. Um, and so it was just basically getting, uh, uh, getting the remaining back end, um, you know, distribution pull, pull contract, a few of the other contracts up to date. Um, and that's the reason we did not have to go through an entire migration event. We went through a stage migration event with every single time that the, the each node tier uh, changed. Uh, so that was the way that we did it and that's the reason that's the reason it went so smoothly it's awesome yeah some amazing engineers at thor i'm not gonna lie <laughs> out of all the other projects i'm in this this team is like top notch hey man look you know it's it's a lot of work and i'm not gonna lie the developers are are, are giant bags of stress balls uh you know they, they, they're working a ungodly amount of time on uh, on those contracts um i'm hoping that they're taking some well-deserved rest now that that new contract is out um and uh yeah you know the, we have a really killer team that's the reason everyone when, when people were talking about you know potential exploits and stuff like that with the new contract you know with us putting out to certic after it is launched um i wanted to make it very clear that we have a very good team and we're very good at uh at the contract sides of things yeah absolutely yeah at least from my perspective as well for sure i i was curious uh there's just the um, last couple things i just wanted to touch on was the v2 gui um do we have any status update on that as well talking about the ui yeah, the the new UI. That's yeah, I've uh, I saw today, um, you know, uh, a a a trailer video that will be on the fr uh, front page, and uh, I'm I'm pretty mind blown. Um, we're looking more than likely a couple weeks away still. Okay, so sometime probably early April would be best yeah, guess. Yeah, I, I would say late late March, early early April. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, and then, and then I, the last thing I, I want to touch on was uh, I was I was thinking like, and maybe you might not be elaborate because maybe this is what you guys are thinking as well. But I was wondering though, like if if um, Thor is positioning those, themselves to be like a DAO slash Dex hybrid at some point with the marketplace, uh, maybe a combination of all three. Uh, n no comment. Okay. <laughs> all right fair enough all right yeah no Thank you. Appreciate, really appreciate, appreciate the question as as i said we have uh we have several utilities uh to our ecosystem that we're adding that we have not announced yet okay i i'm i'm kind of seeing the direction you guys are going yeah so i i, I, I look you i i know you eric you've been around for a long time i know you're a very smart cookie so i'm sure you can put two and two together sure yeah okay <laughs> all thanks, right, thanks again lucky you're very welcome man thank you all right, all right, all right. Bye. All right, uh, Dank Hobbs, go ahead. Uh, hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, now I can't. What happened? All right, Dank Hobbs, uh, figure out your mic because you just... Hello? Oh, there we go. Hello? There we go. Hello. Oh, uh, I can yeah. hear you now. Well, uh, all right, but, uh, well, first of all, thank you uh, for letting me speak and congrats on the release of the V2 contract. Um, the, the question that I have primarily, and maybe... It's because I'm new to the community. Um, but in regards to converting nodes to NFTs in the NFT marketplace, has the team taken into consideration the possibility of, in the event that the price of Thor dips and then you start to get mass uh, holders of nodes kind of undercutting each other in the marketplace for the node NFTs, has that been considered yet? Um, you tend to see it a lot with, NFT projects that are new, mm -hmm. where you know the floor price might be like one Ethereum, and then slowly it drops, you know, to 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and you see more and more people list under the next person. Um, has the team taken any considerations, or maybe even thought of outside of the box to kind of uh, dissuade that, or maybe prevent it altogether? No, um, and and to be completely honest, the the trading value and the value is going to be dictated by the market. 
Um, now, there's a huge difference between the Thor NFT nodes um, and a normal NFT project that you see with a uh, with 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 a falling floor is because our NFTs, our, our nodes NFTs, you know, wh whatever you want to call them at that point, um, those have intrinsic value because they are income producing assets. Uh, so that's 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 something that's very different from any other NFT project. And I don't think we're going to be seeing the same case. Um, that's the reason I think it's very important for us to continuously build out a ecosystem and drive uh, buying pressure to our native token because as long as our native token continues to increase in value or maintain its value uh, the intrinsic value of that node nft is going to remain static or go up in value as you know global node counts either fall or stay static okay thank you um that's really all i had as a former developer i wish you the best of luck continuing to build out the ecosystem and bring you more value to thor and you know, nodes and, and whatnot Awesome. I appreciate that, man. Look, you know, it's, 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 it's always difficult and there's a lot of unknowns and I know we're all scared of the unknowns, but you know, this is why my position as the leader of this project, I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, we're very optimistic about the future and we put a lot of thought into this. Um, we're paving out new roads here. Um, we're doing stuff that's never been done. Um, and with innovation comes risks. Um, what we're doing is we're really making sure that our executional uh, executional abilities are there. Um, and we're allowing that um, in the, in addition to all the different utilities within our ecosystem uh, to really drive up and, and find where that perfect parity price will be. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Dink. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, Kay Balin, go ahead. Okay, you gotta fix your mic there, brother. I'm gonna move on to Dimitri, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, I apologize for the technical errors earlier. I was on mobile and couldn't hear anything, so I was like, hello, hello. All right, I got a question for you. Could you provide any um, reassurance to someone who is very new and isn't starting with a lot of capital to start with a small, smaller node and compound their way up to an Odin? Do you think there's still uh, a relative good amount of time to do this because it takes time to compound up into the highest tier node. I'm I'm really worried about a, a, a cap here. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, as I say, as I say, uh, there's I can't offer reassurances. All right, uh, we're I, we've made it very clear on on where the future of this protocol is heading and, and where this ecosystem is heading. Um, obviously, I've said we're still a significant amount of time out between the marketplace and the node cap being introduced. Um, so that take that for what you will. Um, what you should do is you should utilize your rewards, start staking your rewards, making sure that you're earning rewards on your rewards, um, and then you know uh, potentially save up and, and be able to afford anything that you want. Um, alternatively, you know once there's a node cap, doesn't mean you can't get an Odin. Just means you have to buy that Odin on the secondary market. Ah, okay, I didn't know that. I thought uh, whoever had the Odins has all the Odins now, and no one's. You know, that's the great thing about a marketplace and, and, and Launchpad, right? Where people can sell uh, their NFTs and each right. node being an NFT, you're going to have access to be able to buy that. It's all going to depend on what the market value is, though. Right. Okay. I appreciate it, Loki. All right, brother. Thank you, Dimitri. All right. Uh, Cablin, go ahead. No, your mic's still screwed there, brother. Sorry, man. All right. MOSFET, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Uh, so I'm so sorry if it's a dumb question, but I was thinking, like, maybe why cannot Thor have a YouTube channel, like, as P2E game is coming out? Maybe, like, for future updates and everything, like, in the P2E game, we could, like, launch in some videos on YouTube and make some income through that. Um, I, I mean, you know, look, the, the, the income that generated from, from, from YouTube would be negligible at best. Um, having said that, uh, I, I'm a big fan of YouTube and I have no problem, um, you know, uh, um, you know, e even taking the, the, the weekly Twitch streams that we do here and uploading them on YouTube as well. I got no problem doing that. Um, that's something that I've just haven't personally had the time to, uh, to, to create yet. Um, but yeah, I, I got no issue with that and I see total value in doing that. Like, because like we are right now a fifty thousand like community, but as P two P three game and marketplace comes out, like I think a lot of more people are coming to the community too. So maybe like if everybody helps and 
watch some videos like the ads to we'll make some income for the product. Sure, protocol. sure. I mean, but I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend my time fretting about pennies. To be completely honest, yeah. Um, when, right, when, 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 when we're dealing with significant volumes being generated from the other, other revenue streams. Uh, but I would look more uh, at YouTube as, a, as as an avenue to outreach um, and to introduce more people into the Thor ecosystem, uh, especially when we have these additional utilities. Because by having these additional utilities, we introduce a lot of people, uh, you know, to give them reasons to buy the Thor token, uh, but not necessarily make nodes, uh, which is a, just a tangible benefit because that means there's no net increase in emissions, uh, but there's simultaneously a net increase on our buying pressure, which is obviously the ideal outcome and exactly what we're looking for. Um, so certainly as we get closer to the play to earn game, um, you know, uh, not only uh, coming out, but when we have, you know, more updated, up to date trailers and websites and things like that, um, we'll certainly be looking at adding a YouTube uh, channel and then, you know, making sure that we cross upload all of our AMAs to that YouTube channel, as well as, you know, gods of uh, gods of Asgard's updates and stuff like that. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Lockie. Uh, you're very welcome, brother. You're very welcome. Thank you. All right, Thorzillo, go ahead. Okay. Oh, I I can Hello? you just broke up there. Can I can hear you though? Uh, go ahead. Okay. So I just had a talk about play to earn game. Okay. Uh, AMA today or are they in New York? Uh, so there's no AMA today from the play to earn game. They're in New York getting prepped for a very very big meeting tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is that your question? My question was, oh. no, no, I'm, like, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's kind of hard to like just, uh, understand you because I'm breaking up, you're breaking up. But my question is, hopefully you can hear me. Um, so there are some other play to earn games where you're able to sell, like, are you going to be able to like buy like different skins and weapons and things of that nature with Thor token in the game itself? And then if you are, will you then be able to, let's say if you get tired of the game, even though we're trying to make it not be that way so people can get tired of it but will you be able to sell off like maybe like a big old sword or like a battle axe or armor and things of that nature uh, so I'm going to go no comment on that, but I would think it would be very cool to have cosmetics that are NFTs. And then, you know, it would be even cooler if the exact same uh, protocol that owns that game and runs that game also has an NFT in the place. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. Hopefully you can read between the lines <laughs> there a little bit. <laughs> no, hey, let's do it. And, um, let's go. No, love it. All um, right. All right, brother. Thank you very much for your questions. I'm going to move on here to Panda, uh, Bear, and Bull. Go ahead. Can you hear me okay, Loki? I can hear you. Cool. And I swear the timing of that guy asking about the node cap, that was not intentional. And I, I was joking earlier in the, in the chat. So. <laughs> Just it was hey, funny you know what? I, from I my perspective, on. from my perspective, we made it about an hour and 15 minutes before the node cap question was brought up. <laughs> and that's a major win in my in my books. Uh, that's awesome, and I, I'll I'll get you that that Tesla we talked about. So no worries there. Um, what my my question, which maybe is not going to be able to be answered now because the the game you know guys are are in New York, is have has there been any thought of opening up um, the PTE to like a more broad market, like let's say some type of basic like jetpack or fishing game you can buy on like a Google Play Store. And then somehow bridge that with our token. Does that uh, make sense? I mean, look, it, it really depends on the on the success of the rollout of the play to earn game. But okay. obviously, if we see immense amount of success there, there's no reason why that can't turn into its own little ecosystem within our system. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, I don't need to take up any more time. Cheers, awesome. Lady. Thank you very much, brother. Oh yeah. All right, uh, Sam Kalp, go ahead. Hey, Loki. You able to hear me? Okay. I can hear you perfect. Perfect. Good evening. So I have a question and reference for your friend, uh, David Dotton. I see he is uh, very active in the community and in the Discord, sharing his learning, knowledge, and expertise. Mm -hmm. Do we have any plan on utilizing his experience in this ecosystem somewhere down the line? Uh, so David Doton is uh, not only you know our TA expert who provides all that free content for our ecosystem, um, but he's also one of the major players within the Peter E game. He's uh, he's the one who formed out the connection for the uh, big meeting that we have tomorrow. 
regarding it. Uh, so David Doton's doing a lot of work for Thor in the background. Awesome. Um, I'm referring especially because he is a TA and have good experience. Are we utilizing his TA skills somewhere down the line and putting up, uh, doing some kind of a trading in this ecosystem? We utilize uh, all everybody within our ecosystem for as many different parts as they, they can fill in. So that's everything from, you know, help out with the investment options to TA advice, uh, all the way down to uh, working in conjunction with our DeFi strategists to make sure that we are making the best investments decisions as possible and as you can see comparative to our first few investments to our last few investments uh we've made significantly better choices uh so we've gotten a lot better as we've gotten more people within our ecosystem to help us out with our decision making okay so uh, this means that uh he will be uh putting up his effort and experience and designing us to do the investment in the stock or in the crypto well no he he helps us out from a background role All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Willis Thor, go ahead. NFT. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Willis Thor. Can't hear you. Figure out your mic. All right. I'm gonna move over to Prad. Go ahead, Prad. Can you hear me? Huh? I can hear you now, brother. You got your mic figured out. Let's go. Yay. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Awesome meeting for tomorrow um, in New York. Very excited for that uh, and for us potentially to, to move forward. Uh, yeah, I mean, just I just want to make – because uh, I'm sure everyone's excited to hear about that, that potential meeting. I just want to make it very clear to everybody – Nothing is set in stone until deals are signed. Nothing is set in stone until things are firmed up. This is an introductory meeting, um, but we are very optimistic about the outcome. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Yes. <laughs> um, so my, my only question here, and, and it was kind of answered, but, but not answered fully or fleshed out, with the uh with the maintenance fees right now as there has been huge fluctuation between our native token and and apex is there a potential for adjustment here before that time comes for i think it's the fifth to uh alter that if if the amount of return that you'd be getting from uh your notes uh is comparably less than when we initially went in and and looked at the maintenance fees uh, so yeah, I, as no as we said, what. as we said, the the maintenance fees, especially for the Thor, uh, sorry, especially for the Heimdall and the Freya tiers, are both maintenance mm -hmm. fees that will be more than likely adjusted due to price action, depending on where our price action is when we come closer to the due date. Okay. Um, have you had a chance to? There's been a, a ton of questions about the PTE game. Um, in this call have, have you actually got to sit down and actually uh play play it yet and oh i've I, I, I played the playable demo on, on what's playable so far and i'm very impressed okay well i have nothing else for you I'm super excited uh continually being part of uh the community awesome thank you very much brother thank you for your question thanks guys all right uh blue sky rick go ahead hey loki thanks again for uh Thanks again for all the updates and all the good info lately. Um, and the progress looks is sounding awesome so far um, on the PDE game and just on the whole platform. Um, so I'm super excited. I've been waiting to hear somebody talking about utilizing the NFTs in the game world. And I think if you're going where I think you are, I think this is going to be awesome and pretty pretty big big time. That's the plan. Um, quick question, though, for you. On the quality of life aspect of this, uh, and I apologize if somebody asked this already. I had to jump off for a couple minutes earlier. Um, is there a plan in place to be able to utilize our uh, earned tokens to be able to, to eventually use that for our maintenance fees um, rather than having to pay the tax to no. claim and then no. uh, convert no. into AVEX? No, no, no. Uh, this is like a very, very common question. It's right up there now with node cap. Um, but, uh, okay. yeah, well, yeah. no, no, I'm, I, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to give this answer, you know, super, super clear here. Okay. Um, if we allowed you to pay your maintenance fees in the native Thor token, then we would be looking at a hundred percent sales as hundred percent sale pressure in order to achieve the, the, the whole goal of what that maintenance fee is uh, there for, which is to help build the treasury, especially when we start removing protocol cells, right? 
Um, but if we're in a situation where we have to pay AVAX, then yeah, there certainly is a partial amount of people that are selling their Thor rewards in order to pay their AVAX maintenance fees, but there's also a significant amount of people who are paying with fresh new AVAX, which is a net less of a sell pressure that's being introduced uh, than if we pay allowed maintenance fees to be paid in the Thor. Essentially, what that would be is just an additional form of tax. It would just lower your R ROI, when in reality, what we're looking to do is have a clear revenue stream from that. Perfect. Appreciate that. Thanks. All right, brother. Thank you. Mac Benai, go ahead. All right, still haven't figured out your mic. Willis, uh, go ahead. All right, can you hear me now? I can hear you perfect now. Perfect. Okay, so uh, my quick question is, um, so with the V2 contract, when you guys flipped that switch and made everything just go to the rewards pool, is this just a Band-Aid solution? Or is... Is this going to continue on until the P2E game comes out? Or uh, well, it, it, it's, it's both a Band-Aid solution as well as something that we want to continue on for as long as possible. Um, obviously, there's been some very good effects that have been achieved by this. And, uh, you know, it's come at a cost to the team and it's come at a cost to the treasury. Um, but that's something that's those are both costs that we're willing to absorb. Conan, can you go on mute, please? Hello. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. Be muting some people now. I got a server mute people. All right. Uh, so yeah. Sorry. Um, sorry. I totally lost my train of thought there. Could you just uh, repeat your question there really quickly? Sorry, everybody. Oh, uh, no problem. The band aid solution. Oh yes, yes. So, so 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 it virtually is a band aid solution at at this time. Um, having said that, uh, that's something that we want to keep up for as long as humanly possible. Uh, the good thing is, is we have um a significant amount in savings that are going to allow us to continuously pay out our salaries, uh, to pay out for development costs and make sure that the whole train keeps going here while the team earns absolutely nothing from the protocol. Um, but you know, that's something that can't, you know, happen indefinitely. Um, so we're going to be playing it by ear and we'll be announcing, um, you know, if, and when flips need to be switched again. Very cool. No problem. All right, man. Thanks. All right. Thanks Willis. All right. Uh, D Strauss, go ahead. Hey there, Loki. Sorry. My question actually was answered. So I guess I'll see my way out here shortly. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really appreciate your AMAs and kill them on these AMAs. Last week's AMA, you made me buy a couple Odins, so thanks for that. And uh, well, you guys have a good one. You keep pushing and keep killing it. You're right? very welcome. You're very welcome. Hopefully, this week's AMA got you to buy a couple more. Oh, he's already gone. All right, there we go. Excellent. All right, Conan, go ahead. I'm going to take you off server mute. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Hello. Do you guys have a projected um, target for your maintenance fees? Uh, the, the dollar figures that, that, uh, that are outlined. As far as, uh, monthly. Yeah. As, as far as monthly is the target is the dollar figures that we put out there. So 80 for an Odin. Okay. I, I don't have them in front of me here at 24 Thor. Um, so what, what my question is, do you have like, so currently with the amount of, um, uh, nodes that are in place, mm -hmm. roughly about 5 million. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Are you looking to grow the the maintenance pool to a certain dollar amount, like say ten million, fifteen, twenty million, for example? Um, I mean that's gonna scale with node counts, obviously, and then you know th that's going to have a ceiling, and that ceiling is gonna be reached once we hit a node cap. Um, but you know, from our perspective, right, we, what we want to do is we want to have an ever increasing treasury, especially when we flip switches, like the switches that we just flipped where there's no protocol sales, the treasury needs to grow somehow. So a hundred percent of maintenance fees goes directly into the treasury. Just wondering if that was part of the thinking for, uh, maybe giving you guys some breathing room from no capping and building up the treasury, knowing that you have X amount of dollars coming in per month for the project itself. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean that that goes into the project, but it, it doesn't go into the it doesn't go into the developers' pockets or anything like that. It doesn't go into any of our pockets. All of that money that's generated from the maintenance fees goes directly to the treasury, where we utilize the treasury through you know our most recent treasury vote, for example, and then you know being able to fund massive additions to our ecosystem like a massive PDE game. And that's totally cool, understandable. My think my line of thinking behind it would be. Since we are in this uh, zero percent uh, reduction phase, if that would help push us over the finish line to get the PDE launch and it's, use those uh, use that capital towards 
I see what you're saying now. I, I see what you're saying now. Um, that's something that, that we can. That, that, you know what I mean? That's something that we can certainly think about. Um, when we introduced the maintenance fees, though, we guaranteed and we promised everybody that that money would go directly to the treasury. So the only way that I would be even open to 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 contemplate having a differential on where that money's being distributed, whether it goes to the team, would be through a community vote. Um, so certainly, if we uh, if we come to the time right where 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 we're in a situation where we where we either need to flip the switch back and we have pro call cells in order to help pay for the treasury uh you know uh to add to the treasury and pay for the development costs and the team salaries and etc 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 um i'd be more than happy to put a vote to uh you know what usage of the maintenance fees would go to that um but you know we're that's only something looking that... at six weeks right so I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here if we have six weeks if you keep it at zero the maintenance fees can offset by taking care of the team and we keep our hard date of uh, beginning of may for the game where we can actually start realizing some revenue it may not be something you know it, it may be worth considering that's all i'm saying it's something anyway, that we it, it's something that i'm definitely considering um and it's something that, that we'll discuss as a team and, and 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 we'll figure out the best way to do it um you know obviously right now our priority is just you know being able to bridge over to the opportunity to be able to release some of these major ecosystems um, you know, the, the thing that's going to be coming prior to the game, uh, which is the UI update, uh, I think that's also going to, you know, pro, uh, you know, add a new flourish of energy into the project, into the community, and we're going to see some positive price action from that as well. Um, so, you know, we're the, the, there's a few things that we have to look forward to on the horizon. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's going to be something that uh, that will play by ear. And, and, you know, if we are to make a change to the, uh, to the maintenance fees and the allocations of where those maintenance fees goes to, uh, we will be putting it down to community vote obvious another small suggestion would be a uh, in incremental three five percent weekly something along those lines that way everybody has a, an expectation just thinking out loud again yep. and then um yep. i love everything that's going on personally and i would really love to see um inside the metaverse when that becomes available down the road for everybody and God mode and all that fun stuff is um, the actual utility inside of the metaverse itself, I think would be banging. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think a lot of people sleep on the metaverse. Um, you know, th that's the really cool. I'm not. I know, I know you're not, but I, I think a lot of people are focusing on the PDE and the node cap and the marketplace, and they haven't even thought about the fact that we have an entire sandbox uh, plot that is currently being built out. And we're looking to have that ready to be launched right in line with the sandbox public launch. Uh, so it, we're expecting it to be, uh, you know, a very, very exciting uh, little stretch for us. So w would you say that um, we're really going to start firing on all cylinders uh, beginning of uh, Q2? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we're firing on all cylinders now, right? Uh, just because you as the community aren't seeing it doesn't mean that that development's not happening in the background. Um, but you know, with, with specifically the, uh, the, the, the metaverse, we're going to be making a far larger push towards that metaverse. Uh, once we have, you know, the public dates on when sandbox is going to be playable to the public. Um, so right now we're just in the development stages and the cool thing is, you know, because we're more on sandbox's timeline, that gives us a little bit more time, uh, to breathe and to have development resources go into it. Um, you know, also because sandbox development's done in its own native language, we've had to, you know, work with developers that are already familiar with the sandbox Vox language. Um, and uh, luckily, we have a, a, a core, a really good team for that. Um, and, uh, you know, we expect to have many utilities that are going to be offered through the uh, Asgardian Hangout uh, in the metaverse. Knowing absolutely nothing about NFTs, how will these be skinned for us to actually display on the marketplace when it's uh, in place? Well, Odin's and Freya's and all that, will they have a skin that we need to purchase <clears throat> to attach to our NFT or will it be included? Are you talking about for the note? I've never, I've never are, owned, are you, are you I've, talking I've about for your note? NFT, so I, I honestly have no idea how that works. Yeah, I, I, I just want to clarify here. Are you talking about for your individual note? For the individual nodes that we possess, yeah, yeah, when we um, take so, ownership of them, how so, do we attach uh, imagery, or will that be a marketplace in of its own? No, 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 no. You're not gonna have to buy to attach an image to your node. Uh, it, your node's gonna be its own image, uh, and and that image, you know, I'm sure you could guess. We already have uh, emblems for each one of our nodes, um, and so you know, obviously, you're just going to be able to have that in your wallet, and then you can you can you know list it on the marketplace. You can stake it to the app, and earn rewards, whatever you want to. Perfect. Cool. Thanks, man. All right, brother. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, crazy nub. You're next, and uh, we're gonna do.
probably here i'm gonna invite one more person up and then we're gonna get the questions done from the people who are currently up and then we're gonna call it uh and uh aaron will take over um for the pde whitelist giveaways awesome how you guys doing um so i got two questions one of which is in regards to the p uh to e game and uh the breeding mechanisms would that be it kind of goes with panda too earlier um could you guys implement a um, mobile app that sort of gamifies the breeding uh, aspect of the skins and all that stuff and the characters and skills. That's something that we'd certainly be looking at adding in as 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 an addition to the game. Awesome. Okay. And then um, the other question I forgot. It wasn't as important. Okay. <laughs> so it was just super simple. Well, I'm I'm happy. I could get a quick, uh, quick rapid fire that uh, that answer out there for you. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right, man. Uh, Cable Lion, go ahead. Got a call from you? No, you're not working. All right, Island Boy, go ahead. Hello, hello. Hello. The, the week, hello. The week I finally get my, can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah the week I finally get my mic to work, my question was answered, so I ain't going to tie you guys up. Have a good week. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Island Boy, thank you very much, man. That was uh, one hell of an easy question to answer there. All right, uh, Cable in, have you figured out your mic? No? All right, Thirsty, go ahead. Hey, Luki. Hey. Um, so a couple questions uh, more related to the developer side. Um, so for the marketplace, I assume you'll support 721 and 1155 for the EIP standards. Are there any plans to have a custom interface or probably not an EIP, that'd be too broad, but something that could do marketplace lock-in for an NFT collection if they chose to? Um, I, I'm not going to lie, man. I am not a developer. I am not the right person to ask uh, for this. Um, but uh, 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 we'll be putting much more details out about the marketplace when we get much closer to it. No worries. I know it's, it's a little ways out. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a little ways out, and obviously, I gotta let the developers, you know, develop, uh, and then give me the exact information on on what's how the marketplace is gonna work, so I can relay that to the rest of the community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the second question, maybe also not your uh, domain, but um, as you said, the V two launch went really smoothly. Almost uh, no one really knew it happened, and then it was done. Uh, you don't really see that. Uh, does do the developers have any plans to release an API or friendly ease of use uh, contract functionality? Because um, right now the contract's kind of behind a walled garden. I know yeah. you guys don't want to be forked. Yeah. Um, but more in regards to... Are you just talking like API, make... API calls, like uh, global node counts in each tier? Uh, yeah, something simple like that. Uh, maybe more intricate in the future, but thinking about ideas of developing a community app that utilizes Thor's uh, on-chain data. Um, it's kind of difficult to do. If someone wants to jump in, they need to go dig into everything. Hmm. Um, that's something I'd be more than happy to bring up to the developers and, and, and see uh, the feasibility of that. Awesome. Now, one last question regarding the PDE. Um, there's large games coming out more on the Ethereum side, uh, mm -hmm. like big time Gala, especially with their FPS, Last Expedition, Alluvium, Guild of Guardians. I'm just curious um, if you guys are watching these uh, AAA games as they play out. I mean, none of them are released yet, but how that relates to how the PDE for the Thor game comes. I mean, we're we're uh, we're aware of all the AAA players, and what we're trying to do is we're also trying to be one of those AAA players. Um, and and that means and that means really focusing on our game and making sure that uh, that that we're offering something unique to the market. And I think that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we're not an FPS. We're not some kind of adventure game. We're not a two D platformer. Uh, we're not we're we're not everything that you've seen before. Um, you can really think of us as Fortnite on the blockchain. All right, that's all for me. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Lucas, I'm gonna take you off server mute and go ahead. I oh I can hear you now cable on all right Lucas uh, hold on go ahead great um uh, thank you uh, for the uh, team uh, you make a great, great job um I uh, small question about uh, investing in the token mm -hmm. um, have you had some kind of uh, whale so, um uh, security that uh, not the one big whale can 
invest in token and, and uh, for a leaf uh, too fast. Uh, so no, we don't punish whales. We offer whales opportunities to sell and be ethical within our ecosystem. So we were the first ones to pioneer OTC for that reason. Um, was to give whales an opportunity to buy and sell, uh, pre, uh, irregardless of the market. Um, and that what that allows is that allows uh, massive dumps and massive pumps to not happen. Uh, having said that, not every whale utilizes that. You can certainly see that in the trans uh, transactions that happen. Um, but no, uh, we're not looking to punish uh, anybody, whether you're small or large, to participate within our ecosystem. Um, our goal is to offer more utility uh, to our native token and give more uses to that token so those whales have more reasons to hold and uh, utilize those tokens in different ways. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's my only question. Um, I'm happy to see the game as soon as possible. Great. Awesome, brother. Well, I'm, I'm happy you're Great excited. Job. Awesome. Bye bye. Bye. All right, Lord JJ, go ahead. Can't hear you, buddy. Figure out your mic situation. I'm going to move on to Lucas. Uh, you'll have a couple minutes to figure out your mic situation. If you can't figure it out, I'm sorry to you. Uh, go ahead, Lucas. <laughs> you both, both of you have mic issues that are going on. Uh, so uh, I'm going to invite up uh, Preds and Stonky. And uh, sorry, guys. Uh, please make sure in future that you're checking your mic parameters and you have all your mic situations figured out uh, before you come in uh, and come up on the stage. Uh, Preds, go ahead. Yo, hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Man, I just want to give a quick shout out to y'all, man. You're working hard. Appreciate all the work that you lot are doing. It's massive, man. It's crazy. Um, I got two questions. One question is um, <clears throat> with the game, um, because basically it, it's turned into now like Thor, just pie pioneer in this space. Like I'm just watching all these other projects drop off. Um, compared to what we're doing, and now it just kind of seems like everyone's watching what we're doing or what Strong's doing. Um, are you worried from the perspective that you know people might try and copy what we're doing in regards to this game? Um, is that something that you guys are thinking about um, in terms of you know releasing out that information, or is that something we're worried about? Um, well, I mean that's something that we've uh, <laughs> it's happened really since Thor's been around. Um, Thor has been the pioneering force in, in most of the innovations that have happened in this space. And what we see is whenever we announce something, uh, we see other protocols go, oh, that's a great idea. And they start doing it as well. We saw it with the OTC. We've seen it with marketplaces now. We've seen it with node caps now. All these other projects are talking about node caps out of nowhere. Um, you know, I, I find all of that very funny. Um, but at the end of the day, um, mm -hmm. our unique position is our executional ability and also how good our team is and how cohesive our community is. Um, and those are things that are very difficult to replicate. So I'd be more than happy for other protocols to, to, to you know, attempt to replicate us as much as possible. Um, I think we've proven that it's a that it's a model that works and it's successful. Um, and so I don't blame them for, for, for you know, attempting to, to copy us and, and replicate us. Um, they're not going to get to our size. They're not going to get to our scale by replicating. The only reason we're at the mm -hmm. scale and the size that we are now is because we've been the innovation force within this industry. Um, you know, it, it from our perspective, um, you know, there's there's two of the top node communities right now, and that would be strong in us. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I strong brings its own unique innovations to the market. Uh, they're coming out with their own chain. Um, that's something that has also been copied by many other projects now as well. Um, and so it just it's 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 it's, it's part it's par for the course. It happens. Um, that's also why I have not disclosed some of the new utilities that we're discussing internally. What else we're looking to build to our ecosystem? Um, we're being a little bit more cagey with information now because. It is true. Um, every time, every time that we come up with some kind of new innovation or, or we come up with a new concept, especially if it's a little while away, we see everyone else try to, uh, uh, you know, act on it. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it comes with a course. And you know, I, I think, you know, our unique position, our, our huge community, our dedicated community, our non toxic community, as well as the team that we have behind Thor, um, is what's going to separate us from the pack and allow us to thrive, while others may not have the same level of success trying out the same things that we have. Yeah, man. I, I look. I completely feel you. Like every, every day, I'm seeing like a new project come out. You go into that Discord, and I'm just like, bro, you trying to be just like Loki? Like, like it's <laughs> insane. Like the way some of these projects are just like mimicking 
um, exactly um, the roadmap that we created. It happens. Um, it happens I when you innovate, man. When you innovate, it happens, man. Because you know everybody wants to have an easy way of operating a protocol, and the pro the issue is the successful protocols aren't the ones that ever copy off anyone else. They're the ones that come up with their own concepts, their own ideas. So you know, take that for what you will. Um, I would I would have yeah. dubious I would have dubious visions of success on any protocol that's trying to operate and, and take the ideas that we're taking um, and trying to emulate us. Um, but you know, it's from my perspective, I got no problem with other protocols taking our good ideas as long as they're ethical, as long as they're transparent, as as long as they do things right and they're not scamming people. I don't see this industry as a zero sum game, and I see that there's you know more than enough room for all of us to be successful. My only criteria is that you have to be ethical and you have to be uh, you have to be transparent about it. 100%. And final one, man. Um, like inside the chat room, we're usually talking about, you know, sustainability of the project. And I think compared to everything else, that's, you know, that's why I'm 100% on board with Google. Um, it's just that sustainable, sustainability uh, concept of it. The maintenance fees, mm -hmm. right? So when, when I think about the maintenance fees, you know, I've calculated just roughly, just doing any rough figures that it's, you know, we're looking at receiving three mil up, you know, every month mm -hmm. plus. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I'm happy about that because I feel as if that's a lot of money going um, into the company every month for us to continue innovating. Is it, am I able to think about it in that way? Am I able to just think about it that, hey, look, you know, we are receiving, you know, millions every month to continue growing this project. So there's no worry about us you know, putting the brakes on being innovative is, is kind of oh, yeah. like no, 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 no. <laughs> you can think about it however you want, but I can tell you right now, we have so many more innovative ideas. Um, we have a very large ecosystem that we're trying to build and things like the maintenance fees allows us to fund those. Um, but, uh, you know, from our perspective, it's simultaneous, larger, tre larger, more, more, more regular and larger treasury investments. Um, being made into some smart avenues, especially some longer term avenues where, where we can see some distinct upside. Um, but it's also being nice. able to fund all of the development that goes into this. Um, you know, when when, when uh, you know, this isn't just a team of four people anymore. Um, you know, we've grown, we, we've grown significantly. We're a team of over 30 people. Everyone is paid. Everyone receives a salary. Um, you know, we, we expect professional work out of them uh, in, in exchange for that. And things like the maintenance fees allows us to be able to continuously innovate and, uh, you know, be the driving force within this industry. I love it, man. All right. Thanks so much, man. Don't, don't want to take any more of your time. You guys keep up the good work, man. You guys are amazing. Thank Cheers. you very much, man. I appreciate that. Have a great day, brother. I'm going to move on here to Stonksy is my last question. Go ahead. Dang, I appreciate you. Hey, sorry if this has already been asked. I just wanted to see if the claim all button was going to make a comeback. Planning on making it a comeback with the uh, UI update. Um, we'll, When we get closer to the UI update coming out, we'll be going over exactly what's coming back with that. Fantastic. And just to make sure, there's still no rough time frame on that? Uh, a couple of weeks. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, brother. Thank you very much. Perfect. And so that closes out another successful Thursday AMA. Here we go. I don't know which one that is in the book. Uh, what are we at? Eight or nine now? Let's uh, let's go. Um, you know, luckily I got hundreds, <laughs> tens of hours now <laughs> to do these AMAs. And I think I'm getting better and better at them every week. Um, now, everybody on Twitch, uh, you know, the AMA is just about to end now. Um, I'm just going to say my goodbyes. I'm going to go off mute, on mute on Discord as well and give you my normal uh, special just Twitch people goodbye. Um, but while I'm leaving, uh, please, everybody in the Discord, stay on um, because Aaron is going to be going over um, a lot of the whitelist allocations for the PDE game. Um, so while we don't have a follow-up PDE uh, AMA today because of the major meeting that's happening tomorrow, um, we do want to have some kind of interaction. So so uh, I'm going to pass the torch over to Aaron. Uh, I'm going to go on mute here. I'm going to say goodbye to the Twitch people. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming out to another awesome AMA. And, you know, I'm happy to do these every single week. You know, every single th Thursday at 5 p.m. EST, you got you can look forward to, uh, to the good old Loki AMA. All right, Aaron, it's all yours. All right, now I'm on mute on Discord. Love you all, guys, on Twitch. I so appreciate you guys coming out. Um, you know, I'm on I'm on mute here on Twitter on Discord, so they can't even hear anymore. Um, I love Aaron you guys. Will be right back. He's just having some mic issues. Yeah, now he's on mic.
All right. Well, while he's on mic issues, then I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out here uh, while we uh, let Aaron figure out his mic situation. You know, he's a lot like he's a, he's a lot like the other people. Um, you know, in a lot of our AMAs where they don't have their own oh, mic stage. There you go, Aaron. Hey, there we go. All right, perfect. <laughs> I'm going back on mute. Oh man. Um, All right. No, but no, things look good. I mean, I. All right, so I just deafened myself there. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out. You know, I, I always love to see that we have a couple hundred people that are watching my dumb face live while, while I'm answering out these questions. I know uh, I don't respond to a lot of your, uh, you know, comments that you're making here, but I do try to look at almost all of them if I can. Um, I'm trying to multitask here. I'm, I'm doing everyone thing on Discord. I'm getting people up on the stage. I'm answering questions, and I'm trying to participate in the Twitch chat. Um, so, you know, I just want to say I appreciate you all. I love you all. We got some great things coming out we're gonna have you know the future's looking really bright um you know i'm looking forward to the meeting tomorrow and uh thank you all for coming out i love you all have a fantastic night have a great th rest of your thor's day i'm gonna be taking off all right much love everybody love you all ciao ciao